In this video, we're gonna be talking about the best way to actually create SOPs in your agency. This is the exact same system I use within my agency and our partners' agencies over at Fluxime uh, to create really, really clear standard operating procedures for our employees. This is something that I've taken from Dan Motto, a massive entrepreneur and business coach in this space. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the four C's you actually need when creating an SOP for the different tasks in your agency. And how you can copy this exact same method and implement it in your agency to start creating SOPs that will actually help your employees. So whether you already have existing SOPs and you're looking for a way to actually optimize them or you want to go ahead and actually start creating SOPs for your agency, you're going to love this video because we're not holding anything back. So like I said in the introduction, today I'm going to be talking about the best way to actually create SOPs. We're going to be going over how to create these SOPs, why you should actually create SOPs in your agency, and I'll also be giving you three quick tools you can use to streamline the whole process of creating different SOPs in your agency. So the first thing I want to talk about is how we actually go about creating different SOPs. This is the exact same process that I use in my agency at Fluxamate, and we actually hand off to all of the different partners that we actually work with. But I'll be completely honest, I can't take credit for this. I did not come up with this. This all comes from Dan Martel. Now, if you don't know who he is, he's a massive entrepreneur and business coach in this space. I first heard about him on a podcast, and that actually brought me onto his book, Buy Back Your Time. If you haven't checked it out, I 100% recommend it. It's an amazing book if you're really looking to buy back your time as a CEO. Today, we're specifically going to be focusing on chapter seven, which is where he goes over how to create different SOPs for your agency. If you want to do a bit more research and come straight to the source, feel free to actually check out his book. It's an amazing book. And go to chapter seven, where he goes over how to create playbooks, which are basically SOPs. We might as well get straight into it. The way he actually creates SOPs is broken down into the four C's. We have the camcorder method, the course method, the cadence method, and the checklist methods. Each of these four components basically come together each time you're creating an SOP to create a very, very superior playbook to what people usually do, which is unclear and not that helpful for their agency members or different people that are actually going through the SOP. So we can get straight into it with a camcorder method. Now this is literally as simple as it sounds. All you have to do here is just record yourself actually doing the task. Now here we want to do three different videos for each task within that SOP. Uh, the only reason to do it three times is because every single time you do a task, the, there's going to be slight variations in different things uh, depending on the conditions of the actual task. So doing it three times basically allows you to pull those mistakes. So when someone's actually carrying out a specific SOP and kind of going through the checklist or the recording, if they need any help with a specific scenario or, you know, a variation in the conditions, they can actually go check out the SOP without having to go directly to you and ask you different questions. This is honestly quite simple. And in my opinion, this works best for software related tasks. We can, you can actually share your screen, look at what I'm doing here and kind of talk through a specific process as you're doing it. One bonus tip I'll actually give you for this is talk as you're actually doing it. So talk about what you're doing, how you're actually doing it and why you're doing it. So you can give the person who's actually doing a specific task an understanding of why you're doing the specific things that you're actually doing. This is the bonus tip that I've actually experienced while recording these tasks and it'll make the life of the person who's actually reading the SOP a lot easier. Next thing we want to talk about is course. So for each one of the tasks, you want to create some sort of bullet list of steps of the different actions you actually have to do as you're going through that specific process. Now, if you watch until the end, I'm going to show you a specific way you can do this using a software, specifically when it comes to the computer solve tasks and make it have a bit easier to automatically generate these steps. But this is basically a bullet list of steps that a person that's actually completing a task has to go through. Now Dan says to only complete those sort of uh, high level steps. So for example, check the report, send the report, update the project management tool. And this is kind of where I don't 100% agree with him. It's completely up to preference. But the way I like to do it, I like to have very, very detailed steps. So rather than check the report, send the report, and then update project management tool, I would say something like open reporting tool, open a client portal, check the client report for mistakes, download a PDF to report, open the email app with work email, send template to with a PDF and stuff like that. Just really, really breaking it down to avoid any sort of confusion and just making it as clear as possible. And the only reason I like to do it like this is because back when I was in school, when we did practicals in science, one of the things we had to do is basically write up the instructions for different practicals. And one of the things my teachers always used to say to me is you need to write it as if the person who's actually reading it is a complete idiot, basically. Now, obviously, 90% of the time, your employees are not going to be complete idiots and actually going to be able to understand the SOP at a high level point. 
But the way I see it, you might as well make it as easy as possible for them to actually go through that, which is why I just like to keep it as clear as possible and avoid any confusion. At the end of the day, it's up to preference, uh, depending on what you actually want to do in your agency. So I recommend trying out both. And if you have a preference of one over the other, then go ahead and choose that one. So at this point, we've covered how to actually create first two steps of that SOP, the camcorder and the course. Now we actually need to move on to the cadence. Now, cadence just basically means how often a regularly scheduled thing actually occurs. So for example, for some tasks, they will happen once a month, some tasks that happen just when they're required, or some tasks will happen every single time a new client joins. It's very, very important to actually have this cadence because it gives a person to actually complete an SOP, a guide on when they actually need to complete the different things. So it's really important you actually include this within the SOP so people actually have an understanding of where they actually need to complete it. The last thing we need in our SOP is probably one of the most important things, but it's a checklist. This is different to the steps we had in the second step, because this is just a checklist of the non-negotiable items. So basically a checklist of things that need to be checked off for the task that actually be marked as complete or finished. This is the exact same thing pilots actually use before they go and take off. They have a list of probably about 200 different things they need to check off in terms of the instruments, outside the plane, everything like that. Um, all we're doing is copying the exact same process that they use and applying it to our different SOPs. So this is basically just a checklist that every single time someone goes through it and checks off every single one of the boxes, it means they've actually completed a task. Once again, this just has the aim of keeping everything as clear as possible and avoid any miscommunication or misunderstandings in what actually needs to be done for every single task within your agency. And that's pretty much it guys. That's the best way to actually create SOPs within your agency. If you came in for that, thanks for watching and make sure to check out the all the different videos we have on our channel, uh, showing you how you can use these different things to actually streamline your operations. But if you're more interested in why we actually track SOPs, that's what we're gonna talk about next. So the main purpose of a SOP is to replicate a process without your direct involvement. Obviously, there are a ton of different benefits to actually doing this, but in this video, we talk about specifically three main benefits, which in my eyes, I see as the most important. And the first one is consistency. So right now, let's say your employees are actually doing a task. Each of them will have their own individual way of going through the task and completing it, which isn't a problem if every single employee has the same amount of skill, the same amount of drive, and the same experience in completing that specific task. But in reality, this is not the case. There will be that variation uh, in quality between different employees, which just outputs different levels of work. If you don't have some sort of SOP that they can actually go through to make sure the output is exactly the same. If you do have that, then you can consistently output that same quality work regardless of who's actually doing the task because they're just following instructions. Obviously, they can add their own experience, their own skills, everything like that. However, the main output of whatever work they're doing, like media buying, creating a script, I don't know, creating a funnel, for example, will be the same. So it allows you to maintain that quality across the employees in your agency. The second benefit I'm going to talk about today is efficiency. There's obviously the obvious efficiency that you actually get to remove yourself from different tasks within your agency. So it removes you from those low level tasks and allows you to focus on high level stuff like hiring new employees, focusing on partnerships, talking to those high paying customers, stuff like that. However, there's also a bit more efficiency. Actually handing over these SOPs to your team will allow you to decrease the laziness in your work, increase the output, and actually improve that client experience from creating consistent quality output between different employees. But also, you know, let's say, for example, someone needs help with a specific task, rather than having to go to someone that's higher up and wasting their time, asking them questions, they can just go straight to, directly to the SOP and get all the information they need straight from there, improving the efficiency of the entire team. And the last main benefit I see from creating SOPs is training. Now, if you are at that point where you're training different people in your agency and onboarding new employees, then you know how difficult this actually is, especially when you bring in new people who don't have much experience and you wanna get trained up to your quality as soon as possible. SOPs allow you to do this much faster and without taking time away from those key employees. So for example, let's say you have a new person coming in, rather than having to spend a week shadowing a veteran employee, asking them a bunch of questions, and basically wasting a person's time and taking it away from the business, they can just have access to all the different SOP libraries. Then if they have any additional questions from that, they can go to the veteran employee. But between these two processes, the speed will be much faster when you actually give them access to those different SOPs. So they can not only have faster training, but from the get-go, they can start producing that quality output that your team actually requires and that your clients are actually used to, allow them to integrate very, very seamlessly with what you're doing in your agency. Now, one thing I talk about 
a lot in this channel is client onboarding but team onboarding is just as important you know the way we see it is three people that actually need to win the business there's you as the owner there's your clients but there's also your employees all of those three factors are super super important so if you're at a point when you're onboarding a, a bunch of people on a regular basis i recommend setting up some sort of employee onboarding system similar to what you would do with your clients but with your employees to give them a better experience from a jump and get them into working at quality output as soon as possible sops allow you to do that however it's not the only piece in that puzzle if you want more information go in that i can go ahead and record a secondary video for you so now we've covered how to actually create sops why you should create sops it's time we go on to the bonus tools where I'll be showing you three tools you can actually use to streamline the whole process of creating different SOPs within your agency. These aren't crazy tools, you know, they're nothing new. They've been around for a while. However, it's what allows me and my agency and also all the partners that we actually work with to seamlessly create SOPs without having to involve too many resources in doing it, following the 4C method I talked about earlier. So the first tool is Loom. Now, if you haven't learned of Loom before, it's basically a video recording tool where you can easily just record your screen and I can talk through the different SOPs. This is what I would recommend using to actually record the different SOPs as you're doing it with a camcorder method. Uh, now you could also do this on Zoom if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter which tool you actually use. Uh, I think Loom is the most convenient. I think it's about $10 a month, which is a quite affordable. And it's just an easy way to get you in that kind of mindset to record as much as possible uh, because they make it very, very easy. They also have an app. Literally, you have to do is press a couple buttons and you can start recording your screen, your microphone, your camera. So you can talk through the task as you're actually doing it, uh, making it very, very easy to get those free recordings for each single task you want to have in your SOP. Once again, it doesn't matter if you use Loom or any sort of recording software. I just think Loom is probably the easiest one. The second tool I want to talk about is Scribe. Now I'll put some screenshots up because Scribe is really amazing. Stripe basically allows you to automatically create those steps we talked about and the second step of the SOP automatically. Now I think it's much more useful when it comes to you know computer tasks and what I mean by that is tasks that you're actually doing on your laptop or your computer as you're going through. So for example sign up to a specific account, connecting a pixel to add account, stuff like that. And all you have to do is just start the scribe, go ahead and complete the task and it will automatically take screenshots of everything you're doing and add those steps in for you. It's an amazing tool. I believe it's only like $14 a month, which is extremely affordable for what it actually does. And it will really, really streamline your SOP process when creating those steps, leaving no room for error, literally. So I definitely recommend using that. And the third tool that we want to talk about is Notion. Now, Notion is an amazing tool. I've used it probably for over two years now. And one massive use case for Notion that, you know, multi-million pound companies and startups actually use it for is kind of like a hub to collect different information. So I recommend storing all your SOPs on Notion. Here, you can easily ca categorize them into different departments, share them with specific people, and just have a clear understanding. So if anyone ever needs the SOP, they can easily access it. Now, it doesn't matter if you use Notion or something like Asana, even your own custom internal tool. But it's very, very important. You have a clear place to actually store these different SOPs, which is easy to actually share between your different team, depending on the specific roles they're actually doing. I recommend Notion. I'm probably a bit biased because I love Notion. I wish I could use it as an operating system. But when it comes to specifically hosting different SOPs and having them all in one place, then I recommend going for Notion as the go-to place. Yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. You now know the best ways to actually create SOPs, uh, why you should have created SOPs, and three different tools you can actually use to streamline that process of creating SOPs within your agency. Like I said, I can't take credit for this. So if you want more information on how Dan Motto actually does this, I recommend checking out this book right here, Buy Back Your Time. It's an amazing book. And it talks about a bunch of different things, not just creating SOPs, uh, which as a CEO, you need to implement in your life to buy back your time. Apart from that, guys, that's it from me today. If you liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe to see more videos like this on your feed. We release content every single week going over how to actually streamline your operations using different things like SOPs, automations, custom internal platforms to really streamline operations in your agency so you can set up those skill proof systems to actually maintain that client experience as you're onboarding more and more people throughout your funnel or throughout your agency. If you use this video and actually create different SOPs with it, the next step is I'd recommend setting up an AI system for each sort of department that has all the SOPs as a knowledge base. So if someone ever needs help with a specific SOP, they can easily chat with our assistant 
to get them some knowledge. I go into all of that and how to actually do that in this video right here. I recommend checking it out if you're interested in taking this to the next level. One thing I didn't talk about enough probably is that yes, you can create SOPs for specific tasks, but you also need to create SOPs for things like onboarding, which is probably a collection of different tasks in one place. SOPs can go anywhere from one page to your all the way to 10 pages, depending on how difficult the process or task you're actually doing is. So if you want an example going over the perfect onboarding process, you can check out this video right here to give you an idea of what that actually looks like for SMMA who's really trying to set up a skill proof system for their clients as they're being onboarded to maximize their experience and prevent things like churn. Mapping out these processes is a massive part we do over at Fluxmate because we don't want to go ahead and actually document anything or automate anything without making sure it's optimized in the first place. So if you want any sort of idea on how to do something like that, or you want a really, really good example of an onboarding process that you can just copy and paste in your agency, I recommend checking out this video in the top right hand corner. Apart from that, guys, that's it from me. I'm trying out a new style today. I went ahead and actually changed the setup with a standing desk. So if you prefer this kind of view, make sure to let me know in the comments. And if you have any questions about anything I talked about today, please, please, please drop a comment below with your questions. You know, I say this quite a lot, but we're a small channel. So if you drop a comment, we're 100% going to see it and give it in-depth response on how to actually help you out. So any questions about anything or any feedback, make sure to leave them below in the comments. Uh, we're quite responsive. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want the blueprint to what I talked about today, you can check it out using the first link in the description. And within that description, I've got a bunch of other links where you can book a call with us if you're interested in setting up these different things within your agency or also just find out what we do. Make sure to check those out. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's my pleasure actually recording this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.